Uh, hello everyone, I'm Yang Xi, and today I'm going to talk about our work, uh, single packet, single channel, switch to an array for arc localization. And it's a collaboration between our lab, ISC lab at the, Univers at the University of Michigan, and the IISL lab at uh, Guangzhou Institute of Technology, Science and Technology. So what is arc localization and why localization? So if we know the location of the user, we can uh, support all these uh, amazing applications. But locating the user on its own, it's hard. So instead, we locate the RF wireless capable device with the user, like their phones and smartwatch. So the ability to locate RF transmitters reliably is a fundamental block for uh, these ubiquitous systems. Uh, but there are challenges. So these systems has to be real time, has to be, have low latency. It has to work in real complex environment, not a empty lobby. It has to work with existing device that is already in your pocket. And among all the R localization techniques, uh, angle of arrival is one of the closer one to meet these uh, requirements. So what is angle of arrival? Angle of arrival is we use a multiple antennas to find the incoming radio waves direction. And with more antennas, we have more uh, higher accuracy. But um, that means we need a dedicated receiver for each antenna. And then we have, like, those receivers has to be share the same clock. So these kind of systems are super complex and super expensive. So now researchers said, how about we use a RF switch to connect uh, multiple antennas to just one receiver. But with this, uh, this sacrifice uh, a bit, we have to have workarounds, so they either modify the packets, so now you'll need uh, special hardware to send special packets. It doesn't work with uh, commodity devices. Or you need to receive the same packet multiple times, so that increase your system's latency. So in our work, we did the modify the packets. It worked with, with uh, any PLD capable device. There is, I'm holding a phone. And we're doing per packet angle of arrival calculation. So that means we have super low latency. And also, um, oh, the green dot is showing uh, the prediction of the phone, uh, or the angle arrival of the, of the phone. And on top of that, um, to get the switch timing, normally you need uh, like FPGA or you need to modify the receiver to get that information. And that is super complex. So we remove that, the switch is running freely in a predetermined uh, pattern. So our system looks like that uh, picture in there. So with this hardware, we receive a continuous data stream. So first thing we need to do is do packet identification, uh, packet detection out of the continuous data stream, and then we need to identify which device that packet comes from. After that, because we don't know the switch timing, we have to recover that. And then we have to align the antenna arrays so we get the correct phase differences to calculate the angle of arrival. And finally, we uh, ship it to our angle of arrival ca calculation. And due to the time limit, I will talk about uh, alignment uh, to the reference antenna. So for the rest, uh, you can see the paper. So this is a traditional antenna array. You have four waveforms from all the antennas. It's good. But now we, are having, we have a switched antenna array. So we only get non-overlapping segments from each antenna. And we combine those to our single receiver. We have this uh, Frankenstein monster waveform. And because we are using uh, physically different antennas at different locations, and they have different wire lengths, so they have different gains and phase uh, offsets. And because we don't have switch timing information, it's running on its own. We have no, uh, the waveform's back. And this is a example. So this is one BLE advertising packet we have. And we have to first find this waveform out of the continuous stair stream and then identify it. So now we know uh, which device this comes from. And then when we are recovering the switch timing, we can see when the antenna switches, the magnitude jumps from one. Uh, and then you can see the, the discontinuities inside. That also exists in phase, but we have to do more signal processing to extract the information. But combining those two, uh, we can find the correct switch timing. We can find out which segment is com comes from which antenna. So after that, we have to align, we have to calculate phase offsets. And ideally, or with, with four antenna arrays, you can just take the waveform, subtract that from uh, the other antenna, get the phase differences. But this is the waveform we have. Uh, they are modulated with different bits. You can't just subtract antenna three to antenna two. Then you can, uh, the phase difference is not correct. And this uh, struggles a bit. So normally um, people will have modified packets. 
in the, either inside the packet or after the packet, or they receive the thing multiple times. But um, now here, we, what if we have a reference antenna that is virtual, that is fake, and then we can compare our received waveform to that. So at any time, we can uh, subtract our received waveform to that uh, waveform, to, and then to get the correct phase difference. And to construct that waveform, because we own all the bits inside and we know how the waveform is modulated, we can reverse back to the transmitter and then reconstruct the wave that is being sent out. So there's no noise, there's no frequency drift. So with that, uh, we can have the orange waveform is our received phase, and then the blue waveform is the ideal clean waveform that we constructed. And by subtracting those two, we can get the green line. There's, there's a slope inside. That's the carrier frequency offset. And once we know, get the slope, we can correct that. And we can know, have the purple line. That is the phase difference between the received waveform and the ideal waveform. So now we can just get the phase, correct phase uh, difference between the antennas. So after we get that, we just submit to uh, the angle variable calculation, and that's it. So for the hardware, uh, because we uh, omit, we didn't connect the switch to the receiver, so it's super simple. We have our eight patch antennas, we have our switch, we have our single receiver, and we have the controller to control the switch. And since they're all off the shelf, you can swap them with uh, anything you like, like swap TNC with Arduino, or swap the SDR with uh, any receiver you like. And for our experiment, uh, it's in a uh, office space with desk, chairs, everything's inside, creates lots of multipath. And then for ground truth, uh, we use a vibe tracker for it. And here, um, there are uh, it's a angle of rival uh, calculation for six different uh, user interaction with the phone. So we know we don't hold the phone over our head to create line of sight, right? So you might be texting or answering a phone call or someone what might block uh, your direct line of sight to the receiver. So it's just showing our system still works under all those conditions. So here, we can combine two uh, angle of arrival from two antenna arrays to do two delocalization. So now it's um, uh, five users working, uh, walking at the same time, and they have the phones inside their pocket. And with this system, we can achieve a median error of 2.52 degrees and a median localization error for uh, 48.5 centimeters. So in conclusion, uh, we created a simple and low-cost low hardware implementation that cost around 500 bucks. And it works with is existing off-the-shelf devices, like uh, in the video. You see uh, it's a uh, tiny BLE beacon. I put it in a foam ball so we can toss it around. And the whole system runs in real time. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. If you can, uh, yes, please. Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, really interesting. So, uh, doesn't your uh, the switching time uh, need to align with each packet? Like, if you if you switch between the packet, you get a corruption, right? So, how do you deal with that? Yeah. So the switch just switch on its own, or there's a microcontroller controlling the switch, and it's in a we define like how long it's sitting on each antenna, and because we don't know, it's just switching on its own. It will cause bit errors when we're decoding. So instead of decoding the whole thing, we create our own uh, packet matching and identify, uh, identification methods to uh, do that. I see. So uh, so this works because I guess you use the Pluto, so you could write your own uh, packet identification method. Any thoughts on like perhaps using it with a court system? Because the court system would have a packet, and if you break the packet in the middle, it would create issues, right? Uh, do you, can you just rephrase, uh, can you say that again, the what system? With, with, a, with a commercial system, let's say you, you plug this switch antenna array into a commercial. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, so we actually not actually did that, but we tried it with uh, MATLAB's uh, own decoder. If the switch timing is like you're lucky, it will detect the packet and decode it correctly, Correct. but not all the time. Okay, 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 thank you. So um, based on the, your demonstration video, uh, apparently you can track multiple devices, but uh, uh, basically you look at the raw signals, right? Uh, how do you count the number of devices and how do you distinguish the uh, devices? So for now, we need to get the UID portion, all the uh, identification bits for the devices. So they put that in the system beforehand, then we know there are five users inside. Oh. 
white, white list. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, is it performance? Yeah. Thanks for the great talk. I just wanted to ask, like, uh, the performance of the system, did you check uh, if it degrades with distance? I mean, if the array is kept at a large distance and uh, the move, moving uh, devices are at a great distance from it, how does that affect the performance? Yes. So as distance increases, we can still detect the packet. The packet rate doesn't drop that much, but the angle of rival prediction will, will mess up. That's true. Okay, thank you. Okay. No more questions? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, the last speaker of um, this session also couldn't uh, make it, and uh, Tao uh, will be presenting on behalf.